This is my second vlog. I am here at my grandmother's house in Stockton, California. Um, I have one day here before I take off to Chicago, and so I figured I'd do another vlog. And today I'm kind of doing my diet and how I how I eat normally, not necessarily on as like a pure nutritionist standpoint, but just on what I do for myself and how I keep myself able to play, how I keep myself fit. Um, I think it's really valuable for those of you who are trying to. Um, either step up your, your life game or your rack wall game, either or. It really helps to kind of fill your body with premium fuel rather than filling yourself with garbage. So, um, a lot of people ask me about my diet and what I do. I actually do not eat any gluten, so I've been on a gluten-free diet for about over a year. So that's kind of something that is a restriction for me, but not doesn't have to be for everybody else. So I don't eat much bread or pasta. I also don't eat any replacements because I just don't think they're necessary. So my, a lot of my carbs come from rice, potatoes, vegetables obviously if you can get enough of that in so with that being said I'm gonna kind of go into what I do for breakfast and that'll be a quick little thing because a lot of people think they don't have time for breakfast but I'm gonna show you how quick it is to make a breakfast that's really good for you so first things first we're gonna do breakfast but before I do that I went to Target which is like the closest place to my grandmother's house to get some food and just to show how, how easy and simple it is to get just something for a few days so I usually get some ground turkey I'm, doing, I'm only here for two days before I leave, so I'm gonna do a real small portion of ground turkey and chicken. Um, we're gonna eat dinner tonight off of what I eat all week long, so kind of boring, but I do ground turkey, and I'll show you how to season that when we cook it, and that's usually about four bucks per pound. And then, actually, the chicken here in Stockton was really expensive, but this is just like basic chicken breast. I don't really get anything organic or anything special. And usually it's about $1.99 a pound, but it's $4 a pound instead of $1.99 in Stockton. I'm not exactly sure why, but that's what it is. And so I paid a little extra and usually it's about half the price of uh, what it was there. I always get sweet potatoes. I bought all the sweet potatoes they had left in the store. Um, I guess people in Stockton love sweet potatoes. And sweet potatoes. <laughs> avocados. I actually eat two avocados per day. Um, healthy fat that I love. So I put it on everything. I put it on my lunch and my dinner, and I put a full avocado with salt on everything, so. And those are usually a dollar each. Rice cakes are my snacks at night. That's actually something I just bought. Um, I like chocolate ones, I put peanut butter on them, and, and I crush those things for snacks when I'm feeling hungry, which is always. Um, these are really convenient. You can buy any sort of variation of broccoli or cauliflower. I think actually in the fridge, we have another one that we're gonna cook for dinner as we're Right there, that one right there, see? So this is broccoli, this one has a little bit of cauliflower in it. Get your veggies in, you can mix it up with asparagus or whatever you want. Um, that's really good for your vegetable. And I'm gonna cook some rice. So um, I'm pretty sure my grandmother has rice here, so we're just gonna cook some white rice. I don't really do brown rice because um, it takes really long to cook and I don't have the most, the most time in the world to sit around and wait for rice to cook, plus I get hungry, so. Um, I'll cook white rice, I'll start that up when we start cooking the regular food, not breakfast, so um, now we're going to go Alrighty, so I'm going to do some breakfast, so there's a couple ways I do this. Um, the basics that I always have are spinach and eggs, and I haven't been doing oatmeal lately, and like I said, I'm gluten-free, so I just buy pre-made packets of gluten-free oatmeal, um, because I missed it a lot, I haven't been eating it very much, but the last couple weeks I've been eating some oatmeal again, which is nice good carb source, regular eggs, and spinach. So this is super quick. Um, I will kind of show you how I do this, and I will grab a bowl for the oatmeal. Ew, come here, come here. All right, bowl's here. All right, so the quick thing to do here is I will either mix some ground turkey in here, like if I have, like I cook a lot of ground turkey. I actually cook like four or five pounds of ground turkey every couple days so I can kind of snack on that and mix it in. So I'll mix it in sometimes. What I'll do is I'll brown the ground turkey up a little bit, get it hot, and then I'll throw spinach on top of it. But since I haven't made the ground turkey yet, we're just gonna do spinach in age by itself. Spinach is cool, because I can throw hella spinach in. And as I drop a little on the floor, shocker. And you can kind of just do that. And you can basically put as much, I can put this whole bag in there and it's gonna basically like, lose all of its water and it's gonna shrink up into nothing. Most of you who've cooked with spinach know that already, so uh, once you're done with that, you do that. And try to spatula it over and kinda, just a little something like that. 
if you want. I use like just some non-sticking spray. It's nothing special. This one's like a butter one that I actually don't use. I actually use coconut oil spray at home. Like I'm not at home, so I'll just do a little bit of that just to kind of get a little bit of oil in there and coat the pan. It was the most efficient way to do it, but maybe put it in before. Either or, it doesn't really matter. And I'm just gonna make two eggs. My normal breakfast is kind of excessive. I eat like five or six eggs in the morning, every morning when I wake up. I actually have been buying a carton of egg whites, so I'll do like three eggs with yolks, and then I'll mix in egg whites instead of uh, instead of just eating a bunch of yolks. It's a little uh, more lean, less fat, and like I said, I eat two avocados a day, so I can use by not, I can probably benefit by not eating too much fat. So um, that's pretty easy. And while that's simmering up, we'll just go ahead and open up. We'll do maple. Yeah, we'll do maple and brown sugar because I'm gonna eat this right after, right after it's done. Because I love me some oatmeal. Since I was a kid, my mom used to make me oatmeal. And still a big kid. These are actually huge packs compared to the other ones that I was getting. There seems to be a lot more oatmeal in these. I might only need one. So this is real simple. These are like just instant oatmeals. They're nothing special. Um, like I said, I bought one that was by Nature's Path last time. That was really good. I'm trying Quakers today because I've never tried it. So I'm gonna stir this spinach up a little bit, make sure it's not burning. Um, and then I, my grandma, I thought she had regular milk. Actually, we don't take any lactose in, in at grandma's or at my home. So either lactate or I usually use soy milk, but this is all she had here. And this is just regular one. So we're just gonna fill it up and go for there. I'm gonna just put a little in there, just about to the surface of it. All right, and then I'm just gonna swirl it a little bit and just pop in the microwave for a minute. Easy peasy. And I'll let that sit. Spinach is looking good here. We take the eggs. I try to make like a little, uh, like a little path here. And I try to open a little middle part there for it. See if I can crack eggs under the pressure. That's a little excessive, but I thought <laughs> I thought it would look cool. See, this is pressure pressure egg cracking. Not the best egg cracker, but don't put those down in the garbage disposal. If you've ever done that, you can really mess up your garbage disposal doing that. We'll let those cook up a little bit, turn down the heat so you don't murder your eggs. Uh, let's see, what else? So that's that. As the oatmeal cooks, we got the oatmeal going. We have this going. If you have a Keurig, pop some coffee in. Um, I actually French press coffee in the morning because uh, the lady I live with, Vicky, taught me how to French press the coffee and that's the way to go. And it doesn't look like I put too much, uh, enough non-stick spray, so this is going to stick like crazy, but it should be an easy cleanup. And we've been going for not very long here. This is what, five minutes of explanation. It's usually a little bit quicker, but it takes about, it takes me about six to eight minutes to cook my breakfast every morning. I cook the whites up first before I mix it in, and then bam, give a little, little crazy stir. And depending on who's eating the eggs, you can either cook them as little as much as you want. I actually like them a little bit more. Um, I like the yolky to be a little bit runny, even after I mix it, so. Um, mainly because my mother used to burn the eggs when we were younger. She loves burnt eggs. Mom, you'll watch this in. That's, it's gross. It's gross. So I like my eggs to be handy. My sister's gonna do this. Let me see that camera. It's my sister, Nicole. Hi. For those of you who don't know. <laughs> she's gonna eat the eggs, so we're gonna ask her how she would she like yes, the eggs. Yes, my mother does love burnt eggs and we don't. I don't want burnt eggs. So is that she how's that look? She still gets for her you? eggs like that. How's that looking? That looks good. All right, Let good. me see. You could even go like a little So you want No, that looks good. So no, that looks good. Oh okay. She doesn't want to burn. Anyway, that's my sister. She Hi guys. Around, and that's Aubrey in her yeah, belly. It's my, my niece on the way. <laughs> my nephew's not, he's here, but he's on the new iPad. So. It'll come soon. So I'm going to go ahead and hand this back to my sister. Oh, as the <clears throat> mouth there. 
easy peasy, one, two, three z. You like salt? So I don't, yeah. I don't actually season any of my- uh, but you don't have to, it's fine. I don't, no, well, let me explain it. I don't, <laughs> a little bossy, huh? <laughs> I don't really season anything till after I'm done cooking it, um, or it's com almost completely cooked. I just don't, I don't know. Like when you put seasoning and stuff, it like dries everything out. So like, especially when I cook like, the meats and stuff, like ground turkey, I don't season it until it browns all the way through and then I season it and put it in there. So that, and you want some salt? Um, just a tiny, tiny bit. So okay. I put a little salt in my hand, make sure I can measure it. Get a little sprinkle around. And so, spinach and eggs. It's not like the most pretty looking spinach and eggs. It's not, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> there's a little little crust there, and just toss that in the, whoosh, there we go. And so, that's real simple. Um, I'll eat, like I said, five or six eggs in the morning. Just like that. And then, this, the bowl's kinda hot. Oatmeal, what'll happen is, if it's not the right milk, it will seize up a little bit and it won't really stay. So that needs, a, no, that's about right. So, um, I could could have put a little bit more milk in it because I like a little more runny. I like, I don't know, I like, like a little bit like a soup, but that actually turned out pretty well. And what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of cinnamon no matter what in that. Um, <laughs> so, cinnamon. Funny because you do the same things that mom did oh, when we yeah, were Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I try to make it like my mom's, my mom's oatmeal. Cinnamon, I, she used to put sugar in it, but I don't eat sugar as much as possible. So, eggs, oatmeal, coffee, <clears throat> and then I usually have a protein shake in the morning. Alrighty, here's what I eat for my normal meals all the time. Um, like I said, I do ground turkey and chicken. So I'll just open these up. Um, and basically, what I try to do here is I cook the ground turkey in the pan. That's it, simple. And maybe I'll spray a little bit here just to, again, I use coconut oil most of the time, but this is like a little butter spray. I would actually recommend like olive oil or coconut oil. That's the best way to go. Sizzle, sizzle. One, two, three. Done. That's easy enough. And then I'll take my spatula and I'll give it this. And what we're gonna do, oh, we have to, we have to put this on and turn the oven on to 450. This is the key. The chicken cooking is the key here. 450, let that preheat as we go. And I'll actually throw it in the oven. I'm a little behind on this part. I probably should have preheated that like um, start on. So I should have preheated that when we were cooking breakfast. So now that'll cut back our, our actual total time a little bit. There's no light. I'm standing in the light, sorry guys. Um, try not to get ground turkey everywhere else, else besides the pan. I try to flip it once. And then the easiest way to do this is after you get everything out of it, you just cover it. Let it sit for a view. And that's that. Simple enough. Um, now for the chicken, this part's easy too. So what I do is I actually try to like steam my chicken. So I'll get like a pan. This is a little bit of a different setup than I normally have at home. But usually I try to get like a, a bigger, bigger grill top right there. So I'll open up the chicken. Let's move over here for the prep. Oh, it's move my eggs. Move the <laughs> killed eggs into the junk part of the thing. <coughs> and what I do for seasoning, salt, pepper, and this is something Daniel Rojas actually showed me for chicken. You put the Montreal steak seasoning on it, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's delicious. So, Or <coughs> um, you can put, I don't know, you can put anything you want really on it. You get some salt, get it going. This is just sea salt, standard sea salt. Or you can use table salt if you want, but I think sea salt has a better taste. We'll go with that. We're gonna, ooh, it's open, so I might not try to dump it. Put some pepper on everything. Hopefully not too much, because my sister doesn't like pepper. Too much? No. All right, and then the steak seasoning. This one, I think, has a little bit of totals. What's up, dude? Kaden! Say what's Say up. Say what's up. For Kaden, the what? Do it for the vlog. Say hi, everybody. Hi. Say, how are you? Good morning. Here, come with me so we can record Bobby. All right, so that's easy enough right there. Once that's seasoned up, I don't really like to over-season anything. Again, I don't like too much spices and stuff. 
you kind of just lay these bad boys right along there. And these all should fit, hopefully. This is a real small rack here. Oh, and the other key is um, you want to fill the bottom of this with some water. And that, we're only going to get four into this thing, so that fourth, that fifth piece will just have to hang out. So, my. The, the key to this whole thing right here, Caden, just, just hang out, buddy. You want to come? Want to help me? Go help Bobby. Help Bobby? Yeah. Here, you guys can have a. He likes to help cook. Here. Come here. Bobby's going to bring it for you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go wait. Alright, get on it. And don't forget that it's hot. It it's can be hot, hot right there, so I want be you to careful. Put the water in there. Put the water right in there. Exactly. And that should be good. That should be enough. So what that does is it just kind of gets to like a little steam layer. So how much is <coughs> that? Like a cup of water? It doesn't matter. You just want to fill the bottom of the pan out oh, with okay. some water. So basically, <coughs> the chicken that's sitting in the pan is not going to stick. It's just going to get steamed and. And then it's not gonna really get like seared on top at all. It's just gonna be baked chicken, uh -huh. and it's gonna be really juicy though. It's not gonna be dried out, which nobody likes dry chicken. So um, we're gonna slide this little donkey back. <laughs> Alrighty, and that's that. We'll throw that in the oven once the oven's preheated, and then we'll get back to you with the rest of it in a little bit. All right, ground turkey's brown. Just gonna put a little salt, a little pepper. I like to put. I started putting turmeric in everything. Uh, it's something that I I actually like the flavor of. But we don't have any turmeric, so what I'll do is either I'll put some like taco seasoning in it, but I try to just do salt and pepper. Maybe even sprinkle a little yeah. the steak seasoning in it as Caden is trying to do some other stuff and get ready to cook rice. Put that right there, put that right there. We're gonna cook rice with it. Good job, babe. So that's that. After that's done, it's all browned up. You know when the ground turkey's done, it's all brown, no pink, no raw meat, so you don't get sick. So that's it for the, that's it for the ground turkey. It's done, I'll turn the oven, the burner off, cover it up, and we're all done with that. All right, so I'm gonna make some rice. My grandmother doesn't have regular white rice here. There's nothing in there, dude, not yet. So basically how this works is I'll just dump a good portion of rice in here, and then I will fill it up with water and rinse it out. And then I basically use the first digit of my finger here to, from the top of the rice, the, the digit here should be the water. And that's how I measure I don't really like using measurements, but if you don't want to do that, there's always serving sizes on the back of a rice bag that you can use. So I'll dump a bunch of rice in here. And we already have some rice made, so we'll do that. Right? And then I give it a good rinse. And then once it gets up to that point, I put my finger in there. It's a little short, so I'll put a little more water in there. There it is, that's about to the first digit of my finger right there. And that's that, easy enough. Then I put it on the burner, turn it on like medium, and let it get going until it starts bubbling. And then when it gets bubbling, I'll turn it down, cover it until the rice rises. I don't put salt, I don't put anything in my rice, it's just white rice water, period, that's it. Easy enough, kind of plain rice, but it's better than having a bunch of extra garbage in it. So, what do you think? Yeah. Do you like the broccoli? Broccoli. Broccoli likes you. This is broccoli. You want to explain it? Tell everybody at home what this is. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so if we're going to do just the broccoli, like I said, this is like just a bag broccoli that you can buy. Um, they're really easy, like most of the time you just poke a hole in them. Yeah, so you get a fork or a knife or whatever you want. So they're trees. They're trees. Plus some trees. <laughs> you just poke some holes into it. You throw it in the microwave for like three minutes, and that's that. You also can throw it in the pan and steam rice with water. Or it's not rice, excuse me. The broccoli, you can steam it. it smells good. It smells like broccoli. Good thing it's broccoli. And we're going to put it in the microwave because it's just a steam bag and that's really quick. I'm really about the convenience these days. I actually don't spend that much extra money on buying the bag broccoli than I do like broccoli florets like at the store, so. Um, and that's you that. wanna go fishing with and Bobby? So I'll put it on in three minutes and I'll just leave it in there until I'm ready to serve up all the food and that's that. <clears throat> you wanna go fishing? We gonna go, so next time we do a vlog, we're gonna go fishing. And when we go fishing, we'll, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna catch the fish and we're gonna cook the fish. 
<laughs> We're gonna eat it. We're gonna eat the fish. We eat the fish. Uh huh. Eat the fish. The microwave's done. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that. That's the broccoli. Three minutes later, and our oven's preheated now. And I actually think we might need a little more water. Again, for those who didn't see or pay attention, the part about this is you want to make sure you put a little water in here. Um, in the bottom because it kind of steams the chicken rather than like try to like burn it and it keeps it really really moist so just enough to kind of coat the bottom and then we go right into the oven for like 20 minutes 20 to 25 minutes and just not try to burn myself here and open this all the way and the oven's scorching I go like 400 to 450 with the steam you don't really have to worry about like burning the chicken because you're not having it like directly on the pan so this is kind of nice. I don't have to like watch the chicken and flip it constantly. I'll just put it on. So we'll put a timer on. Uh, timer. Let's just go 23 minutes. All right, let's start. Sweet potatoes. Uh, this is really simple. I don't, I don't really think about this too much. I just kind of, uh, I'll cut off the ends to get the nasty ends off of it. You want to help me? Yeah, for sure, buddy. Hold on one second. You can help me wrap them in the... In the thing. So I'll do that. And then basically I'll just poke holes around it. And this is like the easiest way you can cook sweet potatoes. There's a bunch of different ways, but this is the way I do it because it's fast. I'll either dice them up into real small pieces and put them in like a pan with coconut oil and then just cook them all the way through until they're soft. And you can kind of mush them. What I'm gonna do right now, just because of time's sake, and I don't really feel like doing all that, is I take them and I wrap them in like a, a moist paper towel. And then I just put them in the microwave for about three minutes. And then I let them sit there in the, in the moist towel in the microwave for a little bit after, kind of like what I'm doing with the broccoli. And they soften up for me. <coughs> and then if, uh, if they are still a little firm, then I will, um, either put them back in the microwave, or I can even throw them in like a pan. So sometimes I'll actually put them in the microwave with the, with the paper towel until they're cooked. And then, uh, did I already do this one? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -mm. We'll do it again just in case. Um, and then I'll put them in a pan and I'll kind of fry them up a little bit um, in coconut oil just to kind of give them a little bit more of a, like a crust on the outside. So um, you can use a fork for this as well. It's probably a little faster than doing this. But you get a paper towel. I'll just roll them all up and one. Oops, as I rip the paper towel, the paper towels are so so. And I give them a little give them a little splash around here just to kind of keep it moist. If you don't poke holes in it, you're gonna end up with a sweet potato all over your microwave. So make sure you uh there's the broccoli in the bag all done. Okay. Sure. Yeah. What I eat. That works for me. Again, I'm not a professional at like cooking. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not. I don't, I don't have enough knowledge about all that stuff. But I just know that like over time, this is what's helped me kind of increase the amount of time I can train. It keeps energy more long. Um, I can I can train a lot longer, and with the gluten free, that also helped a lot. Uh, once I cut that out, my training sessions were extended by a lot, so I can train my five, six hour time, six hour training sessions in a day without really feeling like exhausted. Maybe sleepy, maybe mentally exhausted, but my body always feels pretty good to go. <laughs> Is he silly? Hi. All right, pulling out the chicken. Uh, one thing you can do is most of the time you're not going to burn it like I said. Hot. It's, it's, hot. it's looking pretty solid. Um, you see that the juices are white. It's not coming out pink at all. The other way is you can use a thermometer. And I believe it's 165 for the amount for the degrees that needs to be internal temperature. So you put this in there and it should say 160 but it's way over 160 which means we're real good. It was at like over 180 on the thermometer. And I kind of knew that already because of the time. I had it in there a little extra to make sure we cook it all the way and so that it tastes a little more crispy on the outside. So, that's, that's that, that's all done. And we go. Ow. All right, so we're at the very end of my, uh, my cooking. Um, like I was saying, I do this about three times a week as my sister's snap track goes off. 
my admin Snapchat, C U E R N zero. I can't change my Snapchat name. Why can't you change your Snapchat name? I don't know. Yeah, right. you, oh no, you can't. You can't. You no, can't change your username. It's, it's a bummer. They should at least you do it. At least let you do it once. Anyways, on a separate note, we're all done here cooking. Um, wait, I showed you breakfast. What I do for breakfast, which is real basic again, it's eggs and spinach, um, and some oatmeal with a protein shake or coffee. I usually have coffee every morning. I'm, I'm starting to get a little more into coffee. Black, no sugar, no cream, nothing. I don't. It's not not everybody. It's not for everybody, but that's how I do it. Um, unless I go to like a really good coffee place like Phil's or or uh, Starbucks, and then I'll get some like steam half and half inside of it, and maybe a little bit like Splenda or Stevia or something in there that works. So, anyways, it's a real simple meal. Um, as you can see, uh, easy. You have proteins. You have veggies, again, you wanna to try to mix up everything. You can mix in some fish. I will bake salmon once in a while as well. Um, then you have rice, which is like my carb source, and then potatoes also is my starchy carb that I, I like to use, and they're supposed to be really good for you. I'm not exactly sure why. Again, I'm no nutritionist. I just know that this is what I eat on a regular basis to kind of help me train and stay on point so I actually have the energy to train for as long as I think is how I pack it. At first I was doing like meal prepping, right? So I would get like 10 freaking Tupperwares and <coughs> Caden thinks he's Superman. I would buy 10 Tupperwares and try to pack up meals for the whole week. And what happened was like towards the end, <laughs> Caden, hey. <laughs> Sorry. It's my nephew. And me and Marie, you probably seen him already anyways. Um, what would happen is at the end of the week I would get to my meals and they would taste kind of like dry, like the rice would be dry and the meat, I would have to microwave and it's been sitting in the fridge and it just wasn't as good. So what I've been doing is instead of using like, I, I still use these to take food to the gym, but I'll keep a couple of Antium ones and just kind of put them under and then I'll get bigger containers or like, or like the pan that I cook the chicken in, I'll get like small like glass things and I'll put the ground turkey inside of there and then I'll put the chicken in a separate container, broccoli in a separate container, sweet potatoes in a separate container and I'll leave the rice usually in this and I'll put it in the fridge which is a tip of Vicky. I don't know if Vicky's gonna watch this, but Vicky is a savior. That's who I live with and she's awesome and she actually cooks the rice and puts it in there. And so as I go, like I usually eat lunch and dinner at my house before I go to the gym. So I'll wake up in the morning, eat breakfast, handle my business at home, uh, maybe go to the gym for some lessons and I'll come back home and I'll eat lunch at my house. Um, I'll add the avocado into it as well on my lunch, like I said, um, to get like a healthy fat. It gives me a really big energy boost. And then before I leave the gym for the afternoon, which is like the major part of my training, I will bring one meal with me in a Tupperware. You can buy these anywhere at Target, Walmart. You can buy really cheap ones that are like $3 for five of them. Or you can buy like these really nice ones that really won't leak and you reuse them a lot. Um, I don't really see a point in that. I actually like to buy the cheap ones because sometimes I don't like washing them and I don't like really like, they sit at the gym all day and then when I get home they're kind of nasty so I just throw them away a lot of time and that's only a couple bucks for five, so that's the easy way to do that. Um, the good thing about this is I get all the stuff I feel like I need. I'm probably missing stuff, and if a nutritionist came and said to work with me, they'd probably want me to do a little bit more with variety. I do get variety, I do change up my vegetables, I do change up my potatoes. I'll actually do regular potatoes instead of rice and sweet potatoes, I'll do regular potatoes and that's it. Um, just depends on the week and what, what I feel like cooking. I'll sometimes cook steak. Like I said, I'll cook salmon. I'll bake salmon similar way as chicken. I put a couple slices of lemon on top, some uh, olive oil, and just let that bake for 15 minutes, and that cooks all the way through, and that's delicious. Like that's a good, nice, healthy, healthy fat with some omega threes to help me um, stay healthy. With in that sense, um, it's really um, that's it for the for this vlog. Thank you for watching again. Um, press the like button. I know a lot of people you want like buttons. Press the like, like button. Subscribe. Share it with all your friends on Facebook that, that play racquetball or in general that want to want to get themselves in better shape. Mm. And subscribe so you can see more of them. I'm gonna I'm gonna be leaving in three days to Chicago and then I'm going to Chile, South America for for two weeks. So I'll be doing more vlogs and and in the comment section put what you might want to see in the vlog. I know a lot of racquetball people have a lot of questions about what pros do on, on a regular basis and what they do at tournaments. So I'm all for ideas that you guys might want. And uh, thanks for spending this 10, 15 minutes with me. I'm not exactly sure how long it'll be, but thanks for watching and appreciate it. And we'll see you soon.